iPad and set up this computer for programming all the injectors. I have everything written down. This is the front of the engine. This is cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six. This is all the injectors. So I gotta program them in. everything out that we need this is a multiplexer get that in there mark So we're good here, now we're just going to need to turn everything on and get ready. I'm going to go ahead and put the plug the OBD2 in. Alright, that's in. Twist the key to number two. Gosh, Mark, I feel good, man. Awesome. Today, yep. I'm a winner. Awesome. <laughs> that was a good bet on the fuel injectors because as it was firing, you could tell it's misdoing. So yep. some of the injectors are good. Some yep. of them are not so good. And that's why it's doing what it is. But you know what? Hold on, Jason. Hold on, please. I bet I know what's actually going on. Now that we solved this, a little bit more theory opened up. You know when, I, when we were actually testing uh, the compression? Mm -hmm. We had two cylinders, which was both in the back, the three and the six, mm -hmm. they were the lowest ones. I bet they were the ones that was having either no spray or too much spray in the engine not to cause, you know, firing up. Yeah. They were causing us a problem. And the good thing is we have them written down and we also have those injectors so we could simply look at those numbers mm -hmm. and take them out of the pile. Mm -hmm. And you'll have probably four good injectors. That's just a theory. Yeah. You could still test it by pulling one injector off. But would you really want to? Yeah. It's annoying, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you have to, then it's like, okay, like, is this working, you know? Yeah. But we first have to have a working engine. So now we're uploaded here. Now we're gonna open up this. Man, I feel so good. Like, this, this is good. good. I, I, like, I like to be on the money. Like, you know, when it comes to figuring this stuff out. Mm -hmm. So far, it hasn't failed me. <laughs> and I keep remembering time and time again, like this feels frozen. Mark, you won't believe how many times, like I was broken down somewhere in the middle of the country. I don't have no tools, I don't have no scan tools. Like I don't have like nothing with me. And uh, I don't have no parts. And I call my wife, I'm like, okay, I'm broken down. And I'm like, you know, she's like, you gotta fix it. I'm like, this time, I don't think I know what it is. And then I find a problem. And I fix it and I keep going. And she always supported me. Like, that's like such a good thing is to have your wife behind you. Yep. Instead of saying, no, you're an idiot. Just take it to a mechanic, quit messing with it, you know. Yeah. A lot of times mechanics don't know what the heck they're talking about. Right. Right. They're in there to they're get your business. The might say and yeah. And sometimes the books, not pinpointing out the they're book smarts yeah but over here it's you know it's not street smarts but you have to have experience, experience when it comes to actually working with this particular vehicle if you don't you don't know what you really what to really what really to expect yeah. and I know what to expect and and I'm sure you know because you're an owner of this you know what to expect when you're starting it you could tell 
something is not working right as the engine is rotating. Yeah. Okay, gosh, I'm excited. That's why I'm talking too much now. Uh, <laughs> not that I don't, I always talk too much. All right, so with F2, F2. Gosh, this feels so good. I, I like to be a winner. I actually care fixing something. Think about, you know, shops, they'll make money regardless if they fix it or not. But to me, shoot, my heart goes out to all these vehicles. Like, man, I'm trying to like fix them. I'm not trying to guess over here. All right, so we got the Sprinter. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's better. All right. I think Dimitri is going to be happy to hear this. He had the same conclusion from the beginning, even when he contacted me. He actually, after I already talked to you, he says, you need to program the injectors. I'm like, I already told you about that. Mm -hmm. And you were right, it will fire up with the injectors not programmed. It's just not going to work right. right. And that makes sense. It should still fire up. But if they're not good, then they're just not going to fire up. Right. Oh, this is great. I can't wait to see this thing riding on the road again. How long you had this thing? And this will be the third week. Third week? That's it? So you're a winner. Yeah. You haven't had it that long at all. And I've probably had at least 300 people message me wanting to buy it. Oh, wow, really? At least. Wow. But a non-running vehicle versus a running vehicle oh it's a big difference, it's a big difference. I never pay a lot for non-running vehicles right. they're not worth that much when yeah. they're dead You know, um, I want to test the compression of this just to see what's going on before I program it. You okay with that? Yep. Okay. Okay, start cranking it and I'll tell you when to stop. Now, do you want to unplug the crank positions with the crank sensor so it doesn't oh, no. fire up? No. Because it'll probably start up on the second or third. It'll probably start before it gets all the way across. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Just I, I guess let's crank it. Let's see what happens. Anyways, okay. can't hurt anything. Right. You ready? Yes. Perfect. We got the readings. Okay. So we just basically have cylinder two. It's less than 100, but we're doing good. Like it's definitely things are like way different. They're like I wish I could like you know like show you because it should be like within 100. You know spec at least yep. the minimum like this one is less than 100 i mean it could be 100 i mean we don't know what it is but it's definitely higher but all of these numbers are showing like way in there and look our lowest numbers are like 93 93 last time we were like at 67 here mm -hmm. or 87 i think it was like 87 so this is a big difference here uh for what we could see it's definitely doing its thing so everything's higher look all of these numbers everything's just like way in here so the only the only one that's any of concern and this is you know probably to take note is cylinder two that injector probably on its way out i'm just guessing i really don't want to be you know say nonsense but you know this is the only one that's not performing but it's still performing but it's less than us than all of these other ones as you can see so cylinder two 
which would be on the left side, it would be this one here. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I'm wondering, should I film this with the phone? I'm gonna do that with it. Okay. So, was the actuations okay? I'm gonna say yeah. It was okay. Test was okay. Well, end of test. So, okay, we're just gonna hit F1, go, go. What's up, Jason? So this actually what it would be, but it's a little different on the other system. And that's what I did last time. So let's go ahead and actually program these in. No, I know. Oh, I'm looking for this. I'm, I want to make sure we're not going to pull out the other envelope. This is the but one. actually that one I wrote a lot of stuff on it too I'll recognize the difference so with this one we haven't but just wrote this down so let's hit F2 okay so we have cylinder one let me see if it has the old information in here it does okay so that's cylinder one can we turn the light just yeah, that's just something, I guess. B11 Y E A H. Cylinder number two. It's just, it's kind of hard to see the keys. These things are not lit and they're black. <laughs> B I S 3 G A H C S one seven F A H cylinder number four I don't have to hit shift. So B A S seven F five six. Okay, so that's wrong. Okay, I'm just gonna delay it, start over. B A S seven F five. Oh, that's not a six, that's a G. It just looked like sixes a lot of times in the program. So number five. So Jason, you want to see how to program injectors? So yeah. triple A, I, B, and G. And six. So we have an eight. Z, one. And Jason, you think I'm a tree? You're climbing like a monkey. <laughs> so we're good here. So I guess F3, which takes us just to the previous step. So we could just back out of here and exit. Um, yeah, we just gotta exit to the last section and exit a little bit further. Just leave it for now. So everything's programmed, let's go give it a start. All right guys, we just programmed the fuel injectors. We're going to do the first start after programming them. Yeah. I 
That's not good. I guess let's twist it back. Wow. It's not good news. We have to brainstorm. Okay. So guys, upon brainstorming a little bit, I'm asking Mark here um, if he ever started up the sprinter with the injectors that was not programmed. And he actually started it up. It never died. He was able to drive it. And you know that was pretty good so you drove it and stuff it just maybe didn't work a hundred percent right did you notice any kind of differences with it just not being programmed like how did it behave the, the van normal just not at the best performance okay you know, not... so you could tell it's slightly off yeah. but it's drivable right. you could get it home i guess so this gave me a thought in the first start even though the injectors would not program it started like as it should and then it immediately stopped um not so much immediately, maybe like 30 seconds in. The reason it did that, there's a couple reasons. Either one of the injectors has failed, we should, we should technically start up still on five, I mean uh, on five, we should still be good, it might not work right, or it got contaminated. And that's the thing I'm afraid about, because sometimes the reason that they went out in the first place is there's contaminants inside of the fuel lines. And what they do is they contaminate the whole system your injectors so they could have possibly contaminated other fuel injectors or it can be that one fuel injector that we just seen that had those bad readings it could be that one which is basically number two uh, in other case we have these written down and I actually did the test and this three and six was not performing so we could find the injectors with these numbers and find the best performing one and then stick it in there because um, seems like this one was the best performer, this number two, if it's right. But I have the video so I know I know which one was the best. We could choose the best out of the bunch, stick it in that one hole and hope for the best. But I'm just hoping we did not con contaminate the system. But thinking on it further, I don't think we contaminated the system. Um, we replaced the fuel filter so we're pretty much filtering any contaminants that's possibly getting in the only thing that's in question is the high pressure fuel pump if that is contaminated and sending everything in so that could actually be um but what i want to do i want to back out of here and i want to do compression test again and see what kind of results we're going to be uh, coming up with I think we should still try starting this thing up. If it's not starting, we should definitely replace it on that one that's not performing because it's a little bit below standard. And actually, it did not fire up when you, or did it? It did not fire up when we were actually doing a compression test. And good thing we didn't unplug anything because we would think we just done a mistake by unplugging it, we screwed something up. But we didn't because we didn't do any of it. So, Let's go ahead and actually try to try to do that. So we're gonna test the compression right now. Are we at number two? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess we're ready. No. What is it? Yeah. I guess let's start. It's not really giving me anything, so I guess it started up this time really quickly. Yeah. Oh, you twisted it off, so it failed. You could just twist it back now. I guess it timed out or whatever. It timed out, yeah. Because I uh, turned it and it did nothing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're at two right now? Yes. Um, okay, I'm going to hit F1. Guys, guys, so stop rolling that thing, please. I need complete silence. Jason, you hear me? Leave everything on, just let it sit there, please. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Now, you could twist it back a little bit. Okay, kind of like the readings here. Let's see what they are. 
so the cylinder three now it's within spec so this is this is looking good i mean it's about above 100 so the cylinder number two that we were having issues with that that is actually is way up over here so that's actually good so it's a good thing we didn't jump the gun and start replacing stuff um i think let's do a few more tests just to see um just to see what's gonna happen okay let's do it again okay something you have to learn about the system because sometimes we got the green here sometimes we got the green here and we got the red down there and the only thing that's in the green right now it's 107 so like what's that going on and the uh, cylinder 3 is actually the lowest one again but cylinder 2 is doing, doing okay this time So I want to do one more test. So let's do it. Okay. So now the green is in the middle. Everything's looking good now. I mean, all of this stuff is in the green. That's in the green. The only one side of the green is number four, but it's above average. So it's looking better each time. Yes. Um, I'll tell you what, Mark. We may still. Oh, geez. I know what's going on. I know what's going on. You know why it started up the first time? We added that oil inside of the things. That's why it fired up. As soon as that oil burnt off, it shut off on us. So we are dealing with a compression issue here. Um, of course, the injectors was definitely a plus. Now, was those other ones bad? It's in the question, but we're definitely dealing with the compression issue. So the reason it started up was because we had that a little oil. Mm -hmm. So that being said, the repair for this would be either pulling out the injectors again and putting some oil and leaving it overnight because we should have technically let it sit for two hours. We didn't. You know, whatever it took us to put it back together was probably like maybe an hour maybe less we did the job really quick um so we should actually add some stuff to each cylinder so good thing we didn't torque everything to spec i'm feeling a lot more confident in pulling out the injector itself it's easy it's not stuck they're lubricated right now like nothing you know everything should stay in place place them on the table in order take some of that marble mr oil stick it in you know in a little bit more this time you know we could do a little we could be a little bit more graceful this time is that the right word yep to where we could pour a little bit more yes, would sure. you use it like that a little bit more graceful yeah. a little bit more okay it felt right but <laughs> i never used that word before um so that should actually cause the piston rings to get unstuck a little bit so they're not sealing properly you know around because they're a little dry or dry rusted or something who knows but there's no holes in them, which is good because we, you got that camera and we were supposed to take a look at the cylinder, uh, but the hole is too tiny. We can't stick the camera down there. So I feel good about that. Putting more oil in each cylinder, let it sit. You know, it should definitely do the trick. What do you think about that, Mark? Yep. That makes yeah. sense, doesn't it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm liking the compression readings. Well, I don't really... I really don't know okay if i like it or not i'm really you know they're above 100 which is good they're all above 100 right here look this is 108 now right here all of them even on the previous test this wasn't i'm actually going to record this this one test and as you can see guys it starts at 108 now this was this is a lot more than all the previous tests so i'm really not sure if this compression is good or bad but it's certainly better than it was. So we can attempt to start it a few more times. 
because as we are starting it it's also spraying diesel inside of each uh, each cylinder so mm -hmm. technically it should be lubricating it somewhat probably not good enough oil does a lot better trick but the diesel has oil in it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it helps when a vehicle's still good and nothing you know like if yeah. all the rings are good but in this case i think you have to use the marble mr oil okay. yeah. that's that's what i'm thinking i don't even know if i'm recording all this i am <laughs> oh good <laughs> good so at least you have that so guys we're going to attempt starting it um but we are dealing with a compression issue so the very next thing we have to do is pull out each fuel injector pour some marble mr oil in there and let it sit overnight and then put all the injectors back and hopefully the piston rings will get unstuck you know hopefully it'll be better but right now things are not yeah. compressing properly but we want to give it a few more tries because it had a little time to sit right now it had a little bit of that marble mr oil in there it did start up so it's like we're closer we're like we're almost at the finish line i don't want to stop <laughs> so let's give it a few more tries if if uh you know we feel like giving up i think that's about the time pulling out the injectors and pouring that marble mr oil in there <laughs> okay let's keep trying what's up jason you fixed it no oh you got a piece of wire stuck in there can you give me one? Okay, you, you need a you need pliers. You need like um you have any of those needle nose pliers? Mm -hmm. You do that. Okay, let's leave it about now. You know, I could see it's it's kind of strong. It is trying to do its thing. Um, I think the spin is not fast enough. We probably need to give it like 200 amps with my other unit, plug it up and see if that's going to be a little faster spin so that it could finally compress because, hold on Jason, let me explain something. Because when the compression cannot build, you know, because it's leaking, we need to compensate for the extra spin to cause it to finally fire. That's just my thinking. So I think if we're spinning like so somewhat slightly, this is somewhat leaking pressure. It's just not going to fire. Hey Dad, can what? You my shoe? Yes, I can. We're gonna do the engine start. And let's see if we could get a faster spin now. Oh like it needs more power, your compressor. So that kind of died by itself, even though I have the key applied. Please, just uh, let me work. Mark, yeah. it feels faster, doesn't it? Or am I just thinking that? No, it seems to be faster. It does. So that 200 amps definitely uh, is giving it some juice. And it seems like it wants to start, like it's even more trying to start. So we just need those pistons to be sitting properly. I'm going to try, I'm gonna try to have you start it. I wanna observe the engine now with this unit, see, see if it's acting any different. Okay, we're ready. Okay, that's good for now. Yeah, just the end of the engine somewhere. Mm-hmm. So guys, what are we doing here right now is we are replacing the mass airflow sensor even though the computer is not telling us to replace it we do have another one one of the reasons we are replacing it because our engine starts up and it shuts off and one of the symptoms of a bad mass airflow sensor is that your engine will start up and then it will die start up and it will die and i don't believe your computer is always going to throw the code 
Um, now I'm not saying it won't, but these sensors are always working differently. And I wouldn't be surprised if it will not throw the code because man, it would be too easy if it did throw a code. It's like, replace it. A lot of times you're getting a code for those things because something else is off. Maybe air somewhere is off and it's gonna be throwing that code. But when it's dead, I don't think it's gonna be throwing anything, to be honest. Because the fuel injectors we just replaced, it didn't give us any clue that was bad fuel injectors. Otherwise, we would have done it already when we ran the codes. The only code we're getting is for a brake wear sensor in the back and this windshield washer connector uh, because it's not connected. It's like, come on, that has nothing to do with starting an engine. But one thing's for sure, this engine is already starting, it's quitting, so even if we would not be replacing this, um, the thing to be recommended is just keep trying, keep starting it, letting it you know run for a little bit, die, you know, rev on it a little bit if you can, and just keep doing it because this engine has been sitting for a while and the compression in this engine is not that great. So it needs to start working again to regain its, I guess, somewhat of its energy back. But who knows? So we're gonna keep doing it and just keep going. We can't give up now. We're close now. This is no time for giving up. Oh, he's really strong then. Good job. The uh -huh. sensor is in. And now we're just going to attempt to keep trying okay. to start it. I am ready. All right. All right, all right. All right. So it runs a little bit longer. Maybe not, maybe still 20 seconds. But you know what? Out of all those times, this feels a little bit better. It's smoking a little bit because you got the pipe disconnected. So it has nowhere else to go. But it feel, felt better, wasn't it? Like, it felt like it's the proper sound of the engine, like it's just trying to, trying to work. So I guess let's keep going. Kevin, get back, get back. Okay, let's give it a start, Michael. I guess let's keep going. I mean, it's pretty much starting each time now. Just quitting. We're close. We are close. Oh, that was a short one. <laughs> That was a terrible sound. You heard that? It's like Poo! sound like a like a boost leak somewhere. Don't breathe this stuff. Ooh. Stuff is nasty. This is carbon monoxide. You get carbon monoxide poisoning. What do you think poison does? Kills you. So get back. No, we're not. Uh, let's let's um let's just disconnect it. All right, ready.
Okay, it's definitely coming from that pipe. But gosh, that's a, so much smoke. Can you believe that? With it being disconnected. It's a little bit more than usual, don't you think? Oh, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I know, because oh, I <laughs> I've disconnected it before and yeah, connected it. There was not that much smoke. I never have. So it's smoking like hell when right now. Dies, oh, I know why it's smoking. When it dies, I have no pedal. I can't pop it or anything, it's just a dip. Yeah, um, the reason it's smoking is it's probably been some of that diesel that got inside of the pipe. So that could be created, it's yeah. finally burning off because when we were trying to start it, there's a good chance that one of the injectors at least, or two of them, well, we had two of them, it's just pissing diesel in there. So it has to go somewhere, so, so it goes. Kevin, I don't want that computer to drop, please. Just, just leave it where it is. Um, so it goes in the pipe, and when you start, start it up, it starts smoking like, like a, somebody's chimney. I had that happen before, where the injector started leaking inside, and when I started up, man, it was smoking so much it was embarrassing. I was creating clouds of smoke. I took it on the highway and it finally burned it, you know, itself off. So, but mainly all that smoke was inside of, you know, pipes. In your situation, you still got the cat in there. So a lot of that diesel or whatever is probably on the cat. So that's probably why it's smoking so much. So I guess let's, um, let's keep going. Hello. I'm ready. You know, I'm thinking about something. You said, uh, I'm thinking about fuel pressure regulator. What if we have an issue with that? I don't know what's located in this van. I never had to deal with it. But uh, fuel relay, it was running before with that same fuel relay, so chances are that's still good because you run that in here, so. I think if we keep trying, we should develop some extra codes that it might find the throw because finally it's, it's starting up and we're going to get it, the original engine codes because in the past, it's just picking up the regular body codes, which is the sensor in the back and the windshield washer thing. It didn't have uh, enough time to really run. So we should just keep trying and then scan it for code, see if anything else comes back. Yep. My computer. No, just, you could just leave it right there. Here, just, just leave it. Jason, you could stand over here. It's fine, just, just put it here. I don't care. Put it right here. So, are we in number two? Yep. Okay, that's fine. So, let's go ahead and actually exit. I didn't see the Christmas tree, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a little bit harder to tell. So, let's do a quick test. Seems like it's, uh, it's it's telling me the old information. I don't want old information. I want one new information. Okay. I'm working on another vehicle, but no, we're working on the same one. Yeah, go go race some bikes, Kim. Oh yeah, let's go. Need to work. We're probably trying to fix that bad engine. <laughs> We're probably trying to start a bad engine. Yeah. Or fix it. It's it it maybe wrong internally, and here it, we are. Yeah. It really should not be this difficult. No, it should not. We already got it to start up. In a normal situation, this is this this would have been that's it. It's done and over with, it started, go for a drive. But 
this van is trying to really work us to death. Okay, so we got a common rail fault. It's a big F. We have a rail problem. So we're having a fuel problem and Sam is telling us something else too. So I'm going to click on the, um, it's still doing its thing. So let's see what, a, what Sam is gonna tell me. So I'm gonna do current fault codes. So it's telling me basically the same thing it was before. But now we're getting somewhere, we're having a fuel issue. So good, I mean, at least we got something. It's a big F. Now let's see what this big F is about. So I'm gonna do current fault codes. Cylinder six glow plug open circuit. Come on. That's not going to do nothing for a startup. This is a warm day and it's going under fuel rail. What? How does this even make any sense? Oh my goodness. This don't make no sense. So I'm just gonna delete, well, I don't know if I really wanna delete it yet, but that's, it just means you got a bad glow plug in cylinder six. Um. Let's see if we got any stored fault codes. All right, we got some stored. We got can bus, can signal engine off, time from control unit K is still unplausible, stored. Boost pressure regulator, huh? Boost pressure regulator, position of signal fault. Boost pressure regulator. So we have a little bit more codes. I mean, boost pressure seems plausible, but it's pulling up on the fuel rail for some reason. So I'm gonna try to click on that. So I clicked on boost pressure regulator. So let me let me just put this here. That way you can see everything because you're kind of you're kind of in the dark here. Oh, we're not plugged in. That's fine. We have half a life left. We just need to plug in before we die. So this is one of the codes. Once you open it up, it's telling us kind of like what's going on here. So status status of rele uh, relevant actual value, 650 to 710. Engine speed zero. Charge pressure 95%. Specified value on off 90. Is the actual value okay? So this is idling speed. And it says zero RPM. So it's saying that this is a problem. Um, this is the can boss. Nick's loss, a guided test is not, a, not available at present. And why would this be even an issue? So, let's see, um, I am under this one here, common rail diesel injection, which is showing a big fault. So if we go like the current fault codes, it's not going to give me much of anything. Just tell me glow plug for the current. So those two that it's given, it's old codes, but how old are they? Is it from yesterday old? A couple hours ago old? But yesterday we didn't have that fault anymore. And even today it was a small F and now it's a big F. It just, things just changed. So what I want to do is, um, I want to 
do some actuations like we did yesterday like to see what, like what it's doing like when we actually starting it I want to do that um, but I also want to do the compression test again since we've been starting see if we have any changes but before I do any of that I want to ask Dimitri if he thinks uh, what does he think of this stored codes here My name is Serge Zamalara. I'm 37 years old. And yes, I experienced success after buying my first home for cash. Back in 2011, I was broke, but I learned to solve problems on my own. Now I'm helping others to solve their problems. I know what pitfalls to avoid to stay profitable in business. Need motivation to be more successful in your life? Do you have Sprinter Expedite or business problems? Then subscribe. Let's find creative solutions to your problems. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my helpful videos.